57 jewelers now. Yeah, yeah. So what had been working you up until this point, 57 jewelers? Why jewelry? Um, I've always loved jewelry my whole life. I've been buying and selling jewelry since I was little. I've always been rocking chains since I was like 12, 13, watches, trying to buy and sell them, flip them, this, that. Just always been into jewelry in general. Is that purely because of when you're in the rap game, you kind of got uphold this image of jewelry and. Nah, I was business. into jewelry before I even made my first song, before I even knew what rap was, the oh, whole genre. It? Yeah. Okay, so you went to I've from been time into back. jewelry from way back, bro. Yeah. Yeah, literally. So, then what made you actually want to go into it as a business? Because there's one thing, buying and selling it on the side or hobby, having a collection or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But the one thing you think, you know, you know what, I'm actually going to set this up now as an actual legitimate business and take it proper serious. And then to say, I'm going to quit um, music and do I this full time. Well, the, one of the reasons uh, me and Torres, we, we would buy like back like in 2020, we was, was buying and selling like a few bits and bobs, kettles. That's um, one of my partners in Fifth Seven Jewelers and, mm-hmm. um, and Nino as well. And I clocked raw, like, man, I can actually make some peas off some jewels. Like, remember, I bought Olive like 39, went up to like 75. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, so them little things and then where I had so much knowledge on actual jewellery that's watches isn't it jewellery where I had so much knowledge on gold and how to buy it and sell it per gram this and that I just thought do you know what fam man might actually just do this properly now and instead of just selling to jewellers let me actually start trading to the public instead mm. and um, yeah we just went for it still me Torres and Nino how did you all set up because at first you were in Hatton Gardens Arcade right yeah, we're still in Hatton's, but we're just across the road at Baldwin Gardens in yeah. the record hall. Yeah, you've been doing well and you've got your own place now. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Bro, so the yeah. arcade, I actually haven't been there, but from what I've heard, it's basically like different stalls in there and stuff like the different businesses and everything, right? Or Yeah, yeah, that's correct, bro. So yeah. how does it work? So I would just come in there and just literally pick a jeweler. But then my question to that is, how do you stand out from the crowd? Uh, so when we was there, not even sound big headed, but I think we did. We was there for like four months, and obviously we we branded ourselves. We got over twenty k followers on Instagram in a like short space of time, mm. and then we've left the arcade now. So I think when we was there, we we did stand out, and that's why we literally moved so fast. I think it was the way we branded ourselves on social media. Um, obviously, I've I was helped pushing it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, we done customs. Me and um. Nino does hasn't missed a day, by the way. Michael, he goes in every single day and closes. He hasn't missed a single day since we've opened. Um, yeah, bro, I feel everyone's just dedicated, innit? And everyone knows their job and their role, innit? I have a question for people watching, right? You know, everyone who wants to get into jewellery, obviously, Hat and Garden is the, you know, what we hear all the time, Hat and Garden. So going to a place like Arcade, is that a great starting point? Yeah, that's one of the reasons we went there was to meet all the other traders, um, let them know, yo, like, man's doing this for real. Yeah, we're in town now, basically. Yeah, we're here, bro. Like, man's here, man needs some trade price. And that's it, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's good as well, isn't it, to first start off, like, clients might not want to, they won't find you if you're just starting up in an office from day one. Mm-hmm. But where we started in the arcade, our first clients were walk-in clients. So they never came to us through social media. They came to us because they were going to the arcade anyway. Yeah. Then they saw our stall, came to us. Gave them the maddest price. They went to their back to their little town, spreaded the rumor. Yo, I got this Rolex 26mm for my wife for two bags. People can't believe it. They're like, from who? Fifth, seven jewel. And then word of mouth, innit? The fact that you even say Rolex, they had two bags in the same sentence just sounds mad. <laughs> yeah, do you get it? So I, I think when, before we came into, I don't think people was doing it that cheap, innit? So mm. I think that was our, one of our main selling points is that we was just buying it for cheap and selling them cheap. Literally, sometimes we would make fifty pound on a watch when Why we don't? first started oh, just to get our name out there. Just to get the name out there, yeah. Yeah, just to get our name. Like I would rather. Sometimes we wouldn't make nothing. In fact, one time, I think my partner Torres even was like, "Fuck it, I'll lose peas on this just so you can go back and wear it, mm-hmm. just so you can say you got it from it." And I was like, "Yeah, I hear it. I hear it still." Do you sell to like people in the industry, as in rappers? actors whoever it may be people in the market yeah with social media yeah, presence yeah now we do obviously now I'm, that was like when we first started mm-hmm. we were selling um like even taking l's on 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 items just to get our name up there but yeah now obviously because people trust us now and the low we've probably sold over like five thousand six thousand items now so Marshall lost it. um people know now in it like yeah no their things are proper they're 30 and that's why now the, the trust is higher, etc. How, how long has it been running for then? Since April 23. Okay, so this is fairly recent then. 
Yeah, I would say even May because in April we didn't. We was just like setting up. We didn't open and start yeah, selling until yeah. May. What about getting all your stock and all that sort of stuff? Do you, so how does it work? Are you stocking it all yourself or is it all sale or return stuff or? No, we all our stock is ours, bro. Yeah? Yeah, or every single. So you must have invested a lot of money in the beginning to get all the stock in the first place. Yeah, yeah, we did. We put in some peas, man. Yeah, all the music peas straight there. Spotify yeah, album straight yeah, in, yeah, in the li- stock. Literally, bro, literally, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. interested to know, yeah, how much of your business is repeat business? Because if you've built that trust relationship with someone, mm-hmm. then they could easily come back to you in the future, especially if you're, you're essentially like the cheapest jeweler, you know, as you said, you you said to me over this for dinner, yeah, that the Cuban chain you're wearing, right? Mm-hmm. So something like that, someone would go for another jeweler and get quoted. How much was it you said? Probably about 40s at least. 40s. And you're selling yeah. for how much? Uh, I gave you a special price, but a bit, <laughs> a bit like give or take 22K. A lot cheaper. A mad cheaper. That's what I'm saying. But how 20K you, saving. So wh- where are you saving that? Is what I'm trying to understand here and, I'm not trying to ask this in a in a way of disrespect or anything like that, but is it cheaper material or is it because the Same. other jewelers are just yeah. bumping it through the roof? Yeah, so gold is gold, no matter where you get it from, whether mm-hmm. you buy it from, uh, like let's say you buy gold from America or you buy it from England or you buy it from Morocco, uh, nine carat gold is nine carat gold wherever you go in the world. So mm. As long as it's home marked 375, it's 37.5% gold. Yeah. So gold is gold, bro. It has the, everywhere in the gold, in the world, it has, this, it holds the same value at yeah, scrap. Yeah. You can't get that cheaper or anything. Exactly. Yeah. So gold is gold, bro. So this chain, for example, it's a 10 carat gold and it's all natural VS diamonds. Mm-hmm. Again, VS diamonds are VS diamonds. It doesn't matter where you get them from. Um. So it's literally the same quality as what you would get in any other jewelers literally bro explain to me vs diamond because there's a, there's a lot of jewelry terms that i need to unravel here yeah so vs just means very slight yeah yeah that's that's all it stands for very and you got slight. vvs and then you VVS got is very very slight and then the one above is flawless that's yeah. that's for like floyd mayweather and that way yeah yeah but um yeah yeah that's all it is it's just like the grades what's your opinions on like bust down watches and stuff like that aftermarket not factory um, they're good, bro. Just if you're getting them for the right price, yeah. then it's not a problem. Just don't get bumped when you're buying them. Don't go buy like a iced out Roly, a date just for 22 bags. You got to think of it like this if you're how much is the watch worth without the ice? So, a date just without ice, let's say it's a 41 mm date just, you're looking about 7k. Mm-hmm. So, if you're buying it for 22k, it means you've paid 15 grand for the diamonds. That's too much. Mm. If you buy a bust down for, let's say, 11 bags, 12 bags, you're safe now because the watch itself is seven bags and then you've paid four bags for the diamonds. Now that's cool. But it's when people buy bust downs for so high, that's where the saying comes that, oh, they're bad watches, they're bad investments, etc., etc. But honest to God, hand on my heart, we've sold bust downs to clients that have gone and sold them for more. So I don't. Yeah, literally, so literally we sell we fly them. bust downs for fun, yeah. Because we sell them so cheap, you, there's room for people to make money, innit? Yeah, yeah. So, so how much would you sell a bust down for then? Like, like for example, a, a date just. A date just twenty twenty two Rolex. I've sold it for as little as ten bags before. So non bust down date just, how much are you selling them for? Uh depends what year, but starting from about five bags, six bags, and then twenty twenty three is like a date just forty one looking about seven quid. That's retail. Yeah. So you're literally making barely any money on we that. We buy it cheap. We yeah. buy it just under retail at trade price. And then I sell just above retail or retail price. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of margin. That's what I'm saying. So you're literally just focusing on volume. Yeah. yeah but here's what I was going to say to that. Yeah. So going back to, you know, jewelers overcharging, overpricing the customers and whatnot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of them have built massive, massive brands around their jewelry. Yeah. yeah we say we see it all over the UK. And it gets to a point where they're paying more so for the name than the actual item. Yeah. So <coughs> wouldn't you say that's like, the is they can do that because if they're paying for the name, it's like, you know, paying for an iPhone. I can buy this or I can buy a Chinese version for 50 quid. Both yeah. can do the same job, but because this is an iPhone, I can pay a thousand pound. So do you know what I'm trying to say? Like they built it off the brand name rather than not actual really. product i hear that not really though because with rolex bro look for example yeah this is a rolex yeah yeah if you buy a chinese one it's garbage yeah yeah. that's yeah let's just talk real rolexes whether you buy it from us or you buy it from 
Rolex themselves, or you buy it from A Jewelers, you buy it from Viani Jewelers, Trotters. It's still going to, it should be the same price. It's still, this, it's a Rolex is a Rolex. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So where you buy it from doesn't necessarily mean you've now got a better Rolex than another guy just because, even if someone buys like a Rolex on a back road, as long as the Rolex is real, your the main thing is you have a Rolex. Yeah, no, I get that. But then it's like, let's just say I was to buy a piece of jewelry or a watch and I tell my boys, oh yeah, I bought this. And they ask automatically, where did you get that from? And I say, X Jewelers, which is, let's just say, yeah, yeah. the biggest jewelers or biggest watch company in UK. Yeah. And they're like, right, I'm mad. They can charge for that premium purely because of that. No, oh or, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, obviously because their brand's bigger. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Obviously the clients feel more safe going yeah. to bigger brands. Of course, yeah, 100%. Yeah, so yeah, 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 my I question to that. you is, yeah. with you starting her literally within the last year or so, yeah, and eventually in the future, would you say, you're going to build a massive, massive brand, which I believe you will. But do you think you would, it would been be the case of upping the prices, upping your profit margins? Or do you Not forever? Re- we wouldn't up, up our prices, bro. And if we do, it wouldn't be by crazy, crazy. We'll just up the price according to life, bro. Like cost of living. If, for example, we move into the Inflation, main... Inflation, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, if we move on the front line yeah. um, and get a massive shop, then obviously our rent's going to naturally be more. We may increase a little bit, but... I think we'll always be the cheapest, bro, or one of the cheapest anyway. Yeah. 100%. So, uh, do you put your face to the business as well? I was going through the business page on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're on there all the time as well. So it's like you're deep into this business too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. It's, it's not yeah, like man. one of them ones where a rapper set up something and just sitting on the sidelines and the business is running by itself. You're actually deep into this now. Yeah, yeah. When clients come, obviously I'm there all the time serving them, changing links, this, that, that for them. Yeah. So yeah, that's one of the things about the the... I think it's a good selling point as well is that it's not just um, oh it's Ard Adger's business it's when you come you get served by me as well like I'm here bro like doing the groundwork with my partners um, Michael and Torres so so one question I want to ask you throughout the whole podcast bro is now that you're in the jewellery business right yeah yeah just a straight up honest answer and and to be fair you don't have to answer this if you don't want to but in terms of income and what where the money is music or jewellery um, I'd probably say, pr- mm, I don't want to give out no secrets, so I might be real still. No? Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, it's people know how much I've made off music, yeah? Yeah. I'll be real, jewellery is more still, but I don't want people to know, fam. Because then everyone's going to want to be a jeweller, fam. So are, are you open? I want s- people to stay rappers. <laughs> <laughs> are you open to say how much you've made off music, though, and the whole time you're doing music? Yeah, yeah, that's cool, yeah. Go on. Um, so all together since day one, I'd probably say accumulated with streams, shows, CD sales, sign in shit, all this stuff, probably like just over 2M. Yeah, I've said it before in another interview. And what, what but people think that 2M is there with me now, like it's not in one, like, it's grinding, grinding over the years, blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, it's coming, make some, lose uh, some, three bills here, two bags here, one bag. 50 pounds yeah. a bill people it's automatically going to assume that you've got two mil sitting in your bank account right now yeah no it's not that man but what it's I'm hearing that. from that answer and like I said I know you didn't want to answer it but jewellery is more than that yeah yeah no jewellery is 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 a more lucrative business than music 100% and, and the best thing about that is the fact that it's halal as well yeah yeah it's halal yeah, like yeah. you can trade gold and all that sort of stuff so what's the actual vision for 57 bro you've started this for a year and a half now yeah, so yeah. where do you see it going in the future um, we're trying to take over, bro. I'll be honest, man. It's trying to be the first jeweler that pops into people's mind when they're talking about, I want a rolly, I want a ring. But in terms of like what we're going to do next, I would say um, my partner, Abdullah, aka Michael, he, he can explain it to you a lot better still, 100%. What are you saying, bro? You want to come on the podcast? You're sitting in the audience there right now. You want to hop on and explain the vision. Yeah? Come to you, eh? Ads, we'll catch you in a moment. <laughs> this has never happened before. Yeah, literally the swap, swap C. Swap. 